Hey guys, welcome to another hate painting where I paint hate the board game from Cool Me or Not. Today I'm going to be doing the Bulgar Shaman. The Bulgar are kind of a cool uh, tribe, I think, to start out with, just because I think they're going to um, be against a lot of the perceived views of the miniatures in this game and uh, from the color choices to just how dynamic and interesting and different they can look. Uh, and the Shaman, none, nonetheless, even more, she's got like her arms played out. It was a lot of fun to paint. Uh, well, a lot of small details so the, I only th this one was kind of difficult just because I don't think I was prepared for how small the details are um, at this scale where it, it was kind of a big deal coming from the tyrant who was huge to the Bulgar shaman who was uh, who was not was a, a big jump for me so we'll see how how I continue to feel about this going forward of course there will be more uh, Real quick, while you watch the video, if you appreciate it, if you like what you see, go ahead and like the video as well. Give it a thumbs up. That's a huge help. Subscribe if you like the kind of content that I'm producing. Go ahead and check out my channel. And if you do, then feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can see future videos just like this one. Additionally, in the description below, you're going to see a link to my Patreon. For the next two months, I'm going to be giving out... If we can pick it up. One of these uh, stickers that my wife's making. Uh, that's for anybody who uh, is a five dollar backer or more. You just have to. You, you just have to be uh, a patron at least one month for that. Obviously, so one one payment, and you can get the sticker. So it's like a five buck sticker. It helps me out a lot. Uh, so go ahead and check that link out below. There's a lot of other benefits besides that. It's just a limited time thing because, you know, I can only my wife make so many for you guys. So anyway, let's get on to the painting. Okay, today we're starting with basic skin tone. As I've said before many times, this is one of my favorite skin tones just to start out as because you can highlight it and you can shadow and all that quite well. Now, I am making one mistake here. She has a lot of war paint on her or tribal paint on her and so you don't actually need to paint pretty much all of her torso. Really, all you need to do is paint her arms and her legs and her hands. If you do those, you're good. So all of this I'm doing right here is kind of wasted time. Uh, with the the war paint that I put on her, it, it, it you don't see the skin through it or anything like that. It is pretty thick, um, almost like they use some kind of like actual mineral or dirt or something like that. You know, some kind of almost clay based kind of thing, which is which is really cool. Um, but it covers her up completely. It's not cracked or anything like that. And so, uh, um, really, all you need to do is paint her. I guess her toes and, and the back of her heel as well uh, it needs to be painted. But the whole torso and face, you're you're good not painting. Next up is chocolate brown. So uh, this is kind of fun. I like when there's multiple like pelts or these fur cape things that uh, people have in this game, but the, a lot of them seem to be kind of different colors. Um, and so you can kind of play around with it. So I'm using chocolate brown, which was, it's one of my favorite browns. Just, it, it looks like chocolate, especially when it's wet like that. Like it kind of looks delicious, um, but it, it's just a good color too. And it has pretty good coverage here. I have it pretty watered down um, and I'm trying to, actually water down less uh, than I have in the past to try and maybe speed along some things because multiple coats does kind of a bummer. Now with this it's fine because you're going to dry brush it anyways and put a wash on and all that so it's not a huge deal. Now leather brown here is for the her cloth so she's wearing kind of a line cloth kind of thing and then also um, her like boots kind of moccasins kind of uh, stuff there I'm also doing in this this color here. And I really like this brown. It's it's brown, but it's got a little hint of orange in it. Really good. It kind of ties into a lot of browns have these reds and oranges and and kind of the different kind of hues that are all kind of warm colored here. And it really matches the rest of the the miniatures and art, I think, quite well. Alright, next up is Rhinox Hide. I do this a lot. It's a very, very dark brown. If you don't want black, you want brown, but you want it dark, 
choose Rhinox Hide. It's a fantastic base coat, covers well, highlights amazing. The only bummer, and it's actually not a bummer, easy to my advantage, is you can't really put a wash on it. Uh, a, a brown wash, even a no oil wash, isn't going to really show up on it. And now, be careful here. Obviously, um, you, you're, you're painting here uh, on... Uh, very very small detail or kind of her hair braids as they fall all the way down past her waist um and of course there's two sides to it if i were to do this again so if you're going to do this do it better than or smarter than i am finish her 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 uh her uh, skin there uh, add that paint to it and then on top of that paint add this what i ended up doing and it wasn't terrible but i ended up having to touch this up after i added the paint and so you may as well just add the paint and then paint this once ideally um, that's what I would do in the future, but this took some time. It, it's it's very fine detail work, and this is kind of what I talked about in the intro, where there's just a lot of intricate small work here. She's got like kind of a, a rope tie around her abdomen. She's got all these little kind of metallic pieces. Her hair it, it covers a lot more than than I originally had thought. Um, the only thing to add to this is not only is it her hair there, but the um the big tufts that are holding two skulls on either side of her those seem to be her hair as well so when i paint that also it's almost like the back of her hair is is almost holding those at the very bottom uh which which would be unfortunate i think weight distribution wise for her <laughs> like her head would constantly be going back but that's what it looks like to me and then it's got some bones covering it up so um yeah try and be careful it is a dark color and bones are gonna be light colored so um you know don't you know, you don't want to spend forever, but you definitely want to be as careful as possible because the less touch up, the, the quicker overall. And then also the, the tufts on the boots there. Screaming Skull is out, but this is just for the bones, not actually the skulls. So she's got um, kind of two kind of almost like bird skulls on the bottom. She's got two human skulls on her waist. And then she has a skull on her helmet and then a skull on her back. I'm going to do that in two different colors that are just slightly different. If you only have one color, by all means, do Screaming Skull through the whole one or Skeleton Bone, which is the other color, through them all. That's fine. It's not a huge deal. However, if you have multiple kind of bone, you know, these kind of really light tan colors that with a little bit of yellow in them, uh, feel free to use them. Color variation adds a huge amount to... Uh, miniatures and how they look and kind of the overall quality so uh, while you could paint this all in like one brown one silver and and, and one tan uh, a, a, again you're gonna get better results for kind of using multiple browns and multiple tans and, and that kind of stuff so I try to change it up so all the bones are gonna be one and skulls gonna be another additionally I think the artwork kind of looks like that too next up is lava orange don't do this yet I'm painting a rope kind of uh, that that you can see around her uh, her waist and it ends up going through her cloak to like tie the um, the skull and stuff like that. But again, you want to do this after you're done with the paint anyway on her. Next up is desert yellow. This is going to be kind of my wood grain uh, uh, base coat. It's going to get a wash that'll kind of make it the correct color. It'll shift it a little bit. Uh, but for now, this is just kind of that kind of yellow, slightly tan uh, color uh, that it is. As I said, I'm going to do multiple uh, bone types. This is a skeleton bone from Army Painter. It's very close. Um, I almost went with like Drake Tooth, which is kind of like an Upshati bone if you were going with Games Workshop uh, Citadel paints. But it, it's really just uh, um, a little bit lighter. And uh, again, if you wanted to go even more white, more light, you could have done uh, one of the two that I just mentioned uh, instead. I wanted them fairly close, but not... Uh, not, not quite the same. But, it, you know, again, it's one of those things where you, it, it's not a huge... So some are big jumps, right? Dark brown versus light brown. Some are, like, just little things. If you omit it, it's it's going to look good anyway. It's not like it's... It, it, this, the difference between these paints doesn't make the piece, obviously. It's just something I like to do. Uh, so it's just slightly different. Um, I'm going to put the same wash on it. Or we want to highlight them up differently. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when it comes to it.
Next up, we're already going to start on the base because I want it to uh, kind of dry up while I finish the rest of it. So, Agrilin, Badlands, this is the same that I did for half of the base on the Tyrant. However, now that I've used it a little bit, I'm going to changing it up a little bit and how I do it, which I think it comes out much better this time. You're going to want to be f pretty thick, like ridiculously thick, uh, like several millimeter thick. Uh, on the base uh, pretty much as much as you're willing to go however I want some even thicker than that so I want a kind of clumpy and wavy not super flat per se um, because those will get slight ridges you can see now it's already hardened up I actually waited the whole day and ended up painting afterwards anyway um, this is a flesh wash just on the skin again arms feet heel legs that's all you have to do you have to do the body or the torso at all um, it, 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 it cracked really good and it's going to dry brush a lot better because it's got a, some ridges and some even almost hard points almost like it's windswept which I, I really like so I think it came out a lot better this time. Now you'll notice that I've ar already painted black onto the metallic pieces that would be metallic. Uh, I I wasn't sold on it. I, I'm not sure the excruciating amount of extra time. And this is again where I'm conflicted on this model. I spent I essentially painted it twice and I, I wish I would have just painted it once. Uh, so strong tone on that wood, that desert yellow, as I said, that gives it that perfect kind of shade here. And then Agrax Earth Shade is going on a lot. It's going on the cloth, it's going on the base, it's going on the uh, pelt. It's it, it's going to be on the on the uh, the skulls and whatnot. It's kind of going everywhere. So just wash the rest of the mini in it, pretty much. Next up we have Flat Earth as a highlight. Now this is not going to be that like it did on the Tyrant where it's more red base. This is definitely brown. Flat Earth has a tiny bit of orange in it perhaps. But what I like about it is it's such a drastic difference from the chocolate brown which is a fairly dark plus an Agrax Earth shade that it really highlights it up and I think it looks very very good. And as you can see it's a tiny bit more orange which I, I very much enjoy. Leather Brown out again. I'm just bringing this back to its base, uh, base color. I'm not highlighting it up any more than that. Next up again, Skeleton Bones, same thing, just bringing it back to its normal color. That's enough of a highlight from Agrax Earthshade. Uh, you really, you're just wanting that to get into the recesses, the, the sockets of the skull and stuff like that. Next up we have Screaming Skull, but like I said, I'm going to do a little bit different here. I'm just getting the tips. So what it's going to do is it's going to kind of give me a natural blend from uh, darker wash to kind of lighter tips. And luckily because it has like these bands where they're tied to the kind of apparatus that's holding this fanned out of her, uh, it, it gives a natural break to it too, so I don't even really have to blend it. It's actually kind of nice. Now Werewolf Fur is out for the highlight of the hair. Um, again, these big jumps like this on something small you almost need to do, and again it looks great. I, I really like how this highlights up on the Rhinox hide here. Um, no wash needed. Again, you should probably be doing this after you do the paint, uh, just so you don't have to touch it up afterwards. Speaking of paint, Mechanica Standard Grey, this is going to be for her face and her entire torso up to almost her waist. Uh, you're going to see me draw a line across kind of her stomach, her abdomen, where it stops. And then uh, another color will kind of be introduced, again, to match the artwork. And I, I must say, with her kind of, um, you know, braided, very long hair and all the metal in it and then the paint, it's very, very tribal, very... 
um, kind of native, and I really, really like how that turned out. Very unique looking miniature, uh, and uh, one of my favorites just because of that. I think the, the war paint that this tribe has is very cool. So you saw me do the little line there, and now we're going to be with Ivory, and it's going to come from that line, and then just be kind of on her sides on the top here. It's not going to go down to her legs or anything like that. So it's just kind of um, right here on the side. So again, drawing that line, being very careful that that's nice and straight. Um, it's a little bit above that uh, orange rope that I shouldn't have painted yet. Now we have a little bit of white mixed in to the Mechanic of Standard Gray. I actually do two coats of this. I'm only going to show you the one, but the second one I add even more white in just to get some highlights uh, to it because it would still kind of reflect light and it can also kind of just accentuate the the uh, sculpt and body pose that she is so you can see it kind of farther away. Then we're going to highlight up her legs and her arms with the basic skin tone again. Not going to add any white, not going to highlight it up. That's plenty. She's not supposed to be like super bright here. Now we have the beige dry brush, just like I did on the Tyrant. Uh, this is going to be, by the way, how I base the entire clan or the entire tribe in hate. So and I have a breakdown of all the bases I want to do. They're all going to be based uh, uniquely and differently so you can tell the tribes apart without the rings clasping on so you can keep those off and they'll all be unique. They're all different enough to where I think you'll be able to tell them quite nicely. So again, just a, a beige dry brush there. And I, 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 I didn't show you, but I paid extra I did a heavier dry brush on those ridges so they pop up a bit more. Now I have shining silver out on everything I painted black before. Again, you don't have to paint it black. I don't think it really added a whole lot for me in this, um, though it, you know it, it could have. That's fine. Now she's gonna have these little pieces uh, kind of draped over her face and um, in her hair, uh, but just on the torso it doesn't go farther down than that. Actually, it goes about to her midriff, uh, I believe, in the in the concept art. Some of them are defined, some of them look just like hair. Just just put a little bit, almost like you're highlighting, uh, every so often, and it gives the illusion that, you know, these kind of are in, in her braids. That's kind of a, you know, it's, it's adorning her or whatever. That's some kind of a, you know, religious leader in this, in this tribe by the seams of it. All right, we're almost done here. Now I mixed Agrax Earthshade into the Shining Silver, so it's the same paint with the watered down with the wash. And as you can see, it just adds a little bit of brown. And if you look in the concept art, it has that too. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily rust or if it's setting definition. The one thing I would do differently is I would actually cover the whole thing in Nuln Oil first just to give it a bit more definition. Uh, last step here for the paint is we're gonna just put white around it because she is a shaman and you need to know that. So she's gonna have a white rimmed base. And then we're going to matte varnish it in my tester's dull coat. After the varnish, blood for the blood god, on the skulls, both on her waist and on her head, uh, just like in the concept art. It's just, it's almost like dripping down um, from the top. It, it's super gross, but not onto her. Uh, it looks like it's just on the bones, like perhaps it was put on the bones before they were put onto her. Uh, but uh, again, a nice touch. That splash of color adds a huge amount, especially with kind of uh, all brown and then suddenly this stark, shiny, bright white or blue. <laughs> white and blue, what am I talking about? Red for the blood. And again, you want to do this after the matte varnish. If you matte varnish it, it won't be as shiny, it won't look as realistic. It's not going to come off, don't worry about it. And this is the final miniature. This is how she looks like once I'm done. I'm very happy with her. I think she came out great. I think she's a super unique looking piece. Definitely different than a lot of the other stuff you'll see. And she'll me mesh with her tribe very well because of the basing, because of the war paint that they all seem to have. And just overall, a very cool miniature. Love the splash of color with the red there. Uh, you can see those stripes, the straps on the on the back that I, I didn't show you, but I told you about it to kind of hold the, the skull in place. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I always appreciate it. I will be painting more of this tribe and hopefully get through the whole tribe and move on to something else. Uh, if there's something you're wanting me to paint, let me know in the comments below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, thank you so much for watching.